All right, everybody, we're going to get started here in just a minute. I got to make sure I've got everything figured out on my end. Uh, I do appreciate everybody being here today. I, I can see that we've got people from all over the place. Looks like a lot of people from the East Coast. We've got a couple from the D.C. area, Virginia, North Dakota, a couple from California. Uh, but let's let's see here. We're going to take a couple seconds, make sure I've got everything figured out, and then we're going to go through uh, some of this urban navigation stuff. Um, this is the first webinar, so excuse me if I if I kind of jumble it up a little bit. I'll get better with these, but this is going to be the first webinar that we're putting on the academy. Um, it'll be this one will be free for everybody, but in the future we're going to do maybe one a month or so about different topics that uh, everybody in the academy wants to talk about. Sometimes we'll have guests on and and all of that, so it should be should be pretty cool coming up in the future. And I'll get all of this stuff ironed out. Um, and then after we go through this, I will take some. We'll do a question and answer session, depending on on how much time we have left. But uh, I suppose let's let's go ahead and get into this um, today. As you from the email that you received, we're going to go over five things about uh, urban urban navigation and evasion, and some things you need to think about. Um, you know, like here it says our our. Oh, right there. Our main goal is to get out alive. See, I've already screwed up once, but this will get better. Our main goal is to to get out alive. We we could be at work. We could be you know somewhere shopping anywhere in an urban area. Um, you know uh, you know I, our main goal is basically to get out alive. We want to get to our family as quick as possible or wherever we need to go. But if we don't you know if we don't take the proper steps we're not going to get there in the first place so it really doesn't matter how much time you know we were going to save if we end up you know in some sort of roadblock or or riot or anything and in this we'll go through like i said the five steps to bugging in um and I'll, we'll also do we'll also use some google maps and i'll show you how to use those how i use those to kind of plot out a plan for myself and then go to that area that I've kind of looked at on the maps because you get a totally different perspective when you when you travel to that area and and you see it in real life. But with Google Maps, they're pretty cool because you can you can get an idea of what that area looks like. That way when you go down there and you're traveling some of these paths or you're seeing if, you know, on the map it looked like you could get through that area without traveling on somebody's property or without people being around but you get down in that area and maybe you get down there, you know, during rush hour, five o'clock at night or whenever it's most active on the weekends or something. And you see what, what, who's there, how many people are there, what are they doing? Um, all of that stuff. So, and like I said, we're going to go through the five steps and these five steps are, are basically, you know, be the gray man. And we'll go into this in quite a bit of detail right here, but we, we need to be the gray man and think like the homeless do. When you think about it, the homeless people, and I'm not saying be homeless, but uh, um, when you, with the homeless people, they try to avoid people, period. They, you know, you'll be driving down a highway or something and you'll see a tent off on the side of the road. Um, a lot of times you won't see the places that these people live because they don't want you to. Uh, they get harassed by police or, you know, if, if somebody's camped out and, you know, my, the view from my backyard or my office building or something, I'm probably going to say something to the cops and I, I probably wouldn't, but somebody might. So they want to hide. They want to, 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 they are the typical gray man, unless they're, you know, coming out in the daytime and they've got their dirty clothes and haven't showered and stuff like that. It's kind of hard to be the gray man, but think like the homeless do when you're thinking about these routes. So how would a homeless person travel this, uh, any certain route to get from point A to point B? And the thing about that is these people live down there and they, they're there and they're, they don't have automobiles. They, they, you know, they ride the buses sometimes, but they are basically on foot. So they know all the different routes. They know the shortcuts. They know where to go. They know the alleyways. They know where to go without getting in trouble. And, um, you know, sometimes they'll, they'll get in trouble. But uh, for the most part, they know that area really well. And that's kind of where we need to be is when we use these Google Maps and then go down to that area 
and and see what these these different places are actually like when we're on foot and being the gray man is you know don't take your tactical backpack down to down to work with you if you're walking through downtown and you've got a camouflage backpack or something like that or even just a a you know a, an od green backpack or something like that that just doesn't look right you you're kind of making yourself a target and being an absolute gray man means you don't want to leave any kind of impression on anybody is something for somebody to remember you know when somebody's hungry or, or you know somebody sees that you're going a little different way and they see that you've got this back this tactical backpack and and maybe a knife hanging off your pocket they're thinking okay this dude this must be one of those prepper dudes this dude knows exactly where he's going we're gonna hang back a little bit and follow him a lot of people won't think like that i think like that you probably think like that but a lot of people will will kind of follow the herd we're, we're herd animals and you know that's in one of the next parts i'm going to get to with with funnels and bottlenecks and all of that stuff that's what's going to happen and that's why we need to kind of stay away from all of this and, and kind of find different routes and know these routes when we're trying to get out of any sort certain situation like this. Uh, I got a question here about getting out of a um, your, your office building or anything. And, and we're going to go into that in a little bit. So I appreciate that. But um, we will get to that here in just a minute. Um, the next step is using the different places like railroads and streams and natural paths to get through some of these areas. And like I said, when we go into the Google Maps, you'll understand more about this. But these railroads tend to go through metropolises and, and urban areas as kind of like a straight cut all the way through. Most people won't think about this. Most people will think, be thinking about roads and stuff like that. Now, you keep in mind, there will be people thinking about this, and it's it's not going to be us alone. But what we're trying to do in a situation like this is, is increase our odds to get out of there. And the people that are going to be thinking about streams and railroads, you've got to have an idea about, you know, are they going to be dangerous because they know these travel paths? Are they just going to be people that are, are, live downtown or in that area and they know, hey, we can get from here to here using this route and we can get there quick. Um, so this is this is a, a good reason, another good reason to be that gray man and be that guy that looks freaked out and doesn't know what they're doing and just don't bring any attention to yourself that, you know, blend in. If people are, are flipping out, maybe act like you're a little nervous too. Don't be this guy thinking that everything is cool and all is good and, and I'm just going to get out of here because people will look at you and then they'll be following you. They'll either want what you have or all of a sudden you're going to have this this big group around you saying, all right, where do we go now, buddy? So just like I said, be that gray man and think about the different areas like streams, railroads, paths, all that stuff that, that you could use in your area to get from point A to point B. And, and I'll also go through some on the Google Maps. I'll go through um, the different zones where you've got the inner city and then you've got the just right outside the inner city where there's there's probably businesses uh stuff like that and then even right outside that where you've got that industrial area where the businesses are the big you know you, you might have those railways there there might be truck yards and stuff like that these places can be good for resources and can be dangerous as well it really just depends on the situation uh if if some kind of off the grid event happened uh some of these companies might want to protect what they have so there might be guards there or or something or just people there so you want to be careful about that too but having a, a you know looking at the big picture and seeing everything is going to give you kind of a better idea of of how all this stuff is going to work so you know, you'll just have to keep that in mind. If there's nobody there and you see, you know, there might be opportunities for fuel or, or there might be a car or something like that. Who knows? But um, or, you know, food or something like that. These are all things to keep in mind. But and then the third thing we're going to we're going over is how to avoid people, uh, funnels and blocks. And again, I'll, I'll show you in the the maps video. But, you know, we don't want to be 
around all the people because like i said people are herd animals and they're going to go straight for you know wherever they think the help is regardless of you know we know that the help is probably not going to be there that our government um katrina is a good example all of these our government just doesn't have the resources to help everybody that's flipping out they're going to be there and they're going to do what they can and that's just going to draw more people to that because everybody's going to be fighting over it and this is kind of the same thing as the 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 homeless people you see some of these churches and stuff downtown that that feed they have lunches and stuff like that or these shelters and you see this big long line of people they're waiting to get their food and their stuff uh, this is just going to be exponentially worse if something like this were to happen because the government's going to want to one they're going to want to control the situation so they're going to tell everybody where to go or and try to you know gain that that upper hand on everything and and like i said try to keep control of it we don't want to be any near any part of this because we know better we know how people react we know that that how dangerous any situation like this could be so we don't want to be anywhere near stuff like this and another thing to think about is even if people don't, go, you know, go to these areas, there's going to be funnels and, and roadblocks and all sorts of stuff that we need to think about. The lights, the street lights and stuff, if, if it's an off at the grid event, they won't be working. And that will quickly escalate into something that is just just completely out of hand. Um, you know, that gas stations will probably be packed because people don't you know maybe they have a quarter of a tank of gas and they figure hey i've got to get out of here i need some gas where we all know we want to keep a full tank anytime anytime we possibly can these people might not know that and all of this stuff we just really need to avoid i know i've said it a million times but it's 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 the truth if that means you know you're in an office building and you're going out your front door if that means you need to hike around and find a different path away from everything first and then kind of skirt around it that's what you need to do and that's the stuff we need to be ready to do um the the blockages like i said the the streets everybody everybody is going to be getting on the highway and i'm smarter than this you're smarter than this but it, it inevitably happens. People hop on the highway. That's the shortest route to where they want to get. And they don't think about the fact that once they get on that highway, all of a sudden there's a million cars. Kind of like this this first picture that we've got right here. Um, people get on that highway and then you're host. Then you have nowhere to go. You either abandon your vehicle or you know you figure out something else or you sit there and you wait and you wait and you wait. So we need to figure out where these spots are, avoid these spots. And if we if we have a car, we need to figure out some of these back routes that we can take. But the last thing we want to do is is to take one of these routes and get lost. And then all of a sudden we, you know, we, we think we're we're going east and all of a sudden we're going west in and all the and all of a sudden we're right in the middle of, of a big riot or or something that we just can't get out of. And I've got a course on the the Survivalist Prepper Academy too about navigation skills that that goes into how to read a topographic map, how to you know how to use the sun to find your direction, and and how these you know these wilderness skills that that we all try to learn how they apply in an urban setting as well. So it's not just about you know going camping and learning these skills and running up to run to the hills and, and that's where i need to utilize these skills they can be used in an urban setting as well and you know a lot of if you're traveling to a different place or you're you know just your downtown area grab a map of your area and they can be found in you know tour depending on your situation if you're downtown there's gas stations there's library stuff like that where you can find one of these maps and just just have it on you in your bug in bag um, in your automobile wherever that way you know where where your routes are and you can easily if you take that navigation course and you understand how to get your direction you can easily find out where you are and and which ways to to go and not have to rely on memory it's always good to to practice all this stuff but when we're in a situation like that we're going to be freaked out we're going to be panicking we're going to be stressed out and and we might forget some of this stuff so uh, it's always good to have a map with us and just refresh a little bit maybe get out of that hot spot 
calm down, relax a little bit, figure out what our plan is, and we'll have more confidence when we know we've got a plan in place and it's not just scatter and run. But at the same time, we're going to have to deal with those people that don't have a plan in place, and they're just going to scatter and run. They're going to be looking for uh, the ways out. And it, and if you become that that person, their their so, quote unquote savior that can help them get out of that situation, like I said, you're going to have a lot of unwanted friends. Now, like the question earlier, how do you escape from a building? Um, I might do a whole separate webinar on this itself, but. Um, you know, basically, if you're on the 30th floor, I I wouldn't take any sort of elevator or anything like that. And some of them, they, they, most of them these days have a safety feature where it just drops to the bottom floor. But if the power's out and it's already dropped to the bottom floor, you're going to have to take the stairs. And, and taking stairs is, you know, you've got to expect, depending on the size of your building and, and the time frame and all of that, you've got to expect that everybody else is going to be doing the same thing. So what I would do is, is stay as close to the wall as you can. And as you're getting down those stairs, that way if there's pushing and shoving and if there's a lot of people, there will be pushing and shoving. There'll be people running. There'll be people. There'll be older people that can't run and walk as fast. There's going to be a lot of situations like that. Uh, question here is, is by the wall, do you mean closest to the edge? Uh, I believe that I believe what you're trying to say is, is or what I'm trying to say is as you go down the stairs, stay away from the guardrail you know so most stairs will kind of wind down and the last thing you want to be <laughs> is pushed onto one of those guardrails and and take the 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 quick route down because i'm not sure that you would survive but um you know and and just I, I guess I don't. I, it, it's a tough situation because you're just going to have to watch for the nut jobs, and just take your time and and you know try to get down as quickly as possible, but don't put yourself in jeopardy. And and I hate to to kind of say it like this. I don't know how I would react, but if there was somebody elderly that got pushed down and maybe is is in danger of getting trampled, something like that, I don't know that. I don't know what I would do. I don't know that I would stop because then you're putting yourself in danger of getting trampled. If there was something I could do and I knew that if I acted quickly and I got to it, I would probably help that person. But if I knew that there was just so much chaos above me and I was just going to put myself in danger, I, you know, it's, it's something that you have to think about. And, and as far as once you get down to the bottom, you know, you're, you're finding that escape route, you've got to know that those doors, that main door is going to be packed with people as well. So I don't know uh, if you've got an opportunity and you see that, that it isn't packed, shoot head for it. Yeah. But look at it. Make sure you know the surroundings of your building, the inside, you know, where are these fire escapes? Uh, usually they're going to be right by the stairs these might be packed as well uh you know depending on the situation there could be broken windows there could be all sorts of things so you know kind of notice i don't know that i'd be one of the people breaking the windows because then you're drawing attention to yourself but kind of notice you know in a if if where i work if there is some sort of disaster or chaos going on what's likely going to happen on that bottom floor and what am i going to do uh, just like practicing with a gun and anything else you kind of when you walk into work in the mornings or, or you're leaving work, kind of think about these things and, and maybe take a different route, you know, instead of going out the front door and, you know, kind of following the path that the herd's going to follow or even the path that you follow every day to get from your work to your car. Uh, think about different places that you could park that that not everybody parks in. And it might take a little bit longer to, to get to your work. You know, you might have to walk 100, 200 yards more. But is it, is it going to make you safer? And that's the, the things to think about in a situation like that. And, you know, is it off that, that beaten path? Are you kind of going away from where everybody else is going to go? You know, if you have to go behind your building um, and then skirt around away from all of the other stuff, uh, that's, you know, that could be your best option. And like I said, when people are panicking like this, they're getting to their cars, they're going to be on the roads, and they're going to go straight for the highways. That's what everybody does. So, you know, your routes to work, practice what are the back roads, you know, and we'll get into this Google map here thing in, in just a little bit. But what are those back roads? How can you get there 
through neighborhoods and stuff like that that might be a little less you know populated i suppose um in a situation like that there there is no such thing as all alone you're gonna have to kind of roll the dice and, and give yourself the best chance at survival now one more thing and, and it, depending on how long this takes uh if it takes you a couple days to get out of the city to actually bug into where you want to go whether that's your home or your bug out location or wherever you're going you might have to think about resources and and foraging and and you know it's a dangerous situation when you go on somebody else's property and and try to you know get some food or or find water or anything like that but this i mean it might be a situation we're put in and that's why i kind of think that it i might try to uh, take these these railroads and these rivers if we've got a live straw or something like that that usually urban rivers are just completely terrible uh, could have chemicals and stuff like that you know it's it's really a crapshoot but um, you know I it's um, you've got to find that you might be in the situation to find these these resources and all of that so um, going through industrial areas where where there might be um, you know, large vehicles, abandoned buildings, stuff like that, where they might have the resources you need. And like I said, if you if you need fuel or anything like that, those could be areas where they store a lot of fuel. Um, these also could be areas where there's a lot of people and they're looking to get what you have, basically, or, or get what there is before you have it. Um, so, you know, it's, it's just a, a dangerous situation being in an urban setting when stuff like this is going on but knowing the 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 steps to take i suppose to to give yourself the best odds it's going to be a dangerous situation uh if it's any sort of grid down event any sort of terrorist event or anything like that there is there is no such thing as you know take this underground tunnel that only you know about and and get out of town you're going to have to go through a lot of this different stuff and you're going to have to understand what gives you the best odds and and i'll go into being the gray man in in a lot more detail later on but you just that's basically just be as normal as you can be and and completely average i mean just completely average you've got the average clothes on you look the part urban camouflage is basically dressing like everybody else dresses down there and you know there's a mix there's wackos and there's businessmen and then there's just regular people and um, me I'm, I'm going for the the jeans and t-shirt maybe with a, a backpack that just looks like a regular school backpack or something like that um, and then think like the homeless they they know all they're on foot all of the time so they know these different routes that they can take to stay off the main roads and and they know how to get to places quickly because that's what they do on a daily basis they're always walking and then think about using railroads and streams and natural paths all of that stuff uh, obvious is to avoid people and, and and know that there's going to be funnels and blocks and kind of try to guess where those where those funnels and blocks are most likely going to be um, and then to escape from your building, you know, you just got to be as careful as you can scope out your building, you, you know, wherever you work or wherever you go up quite a bit and just just kind of have that alertness and know that, OK, if this happened right now, what would I do? Or if I were upstairs and I was traveling down and by the time I got downstairs, all hell was breaking loose, what would I do? And then then and then know about you know where where some places might be opportunities for resources and foraging and foraging i don't mean going into somebody's yard and, and picking through their garden there could be places around your work that have apple trees if it's summertime and, and apples are in bloom that all you have to do is walk down the street and grab a couple apples you don't have to go on their property at all um, depending on where you live it could be oranges stuff like that uh, d around the rivers there could be stuff look at the you know figure out what kind of plant life in in your city is is actually edible <laughs> uh it, it might be disgusting but hey you know there's there's dandelions all over the place there's 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 stuff you you can you can eat if you need to so let's real quick let's go let's close this real quick and let's go to this google map that i have here um let's see yeah let's do that and this is kind of an area that i i kind of picked out and we'll see we'll see how well this works um 
let's zoom in here a little bit and let's say that you know this area let me see something um okay i can't do that sorry okay so i was trying to highlight the cursor hopefully you guys can see this um so so let's say you're in this area and maybe you're working in this building or you know let's come down here maybe there's some stuff over here maybe this is a big retirement home or something i'm not sure uh, let's zoom out a little bit we'll pick that place right there and and you can see this is densely populated everywhere right here and and my thought would be that most people when they're trying to get out of here are going to go straight for this road right here it looks like a two-lane highway or something and this is where people are going to go and as you see it it goes pretty straight all the way through and then it comes to a highway right here um, there's nothing really around anywhere right there so oops let me go back in here so what i would do in a situation like this is i would go the opposite way as you can see there's you know if we travel a little bit this way there's some stuff over here that's a little bit more open it looks like a little bit of industrial right here and then there's some really open stuff over here now if we zoom out and remember we're right here if we go this way there's a you know a little bit of open space over here but then it just gets into more more disastrous kind of dense dense population i don't know if it'd be dead disastrous or not but as you see if you travel this way you know you've got some more open area out here you've got some industrial stuff you've got a train track that runs through right here and you've also got this river that kind of runs here and up here so where were we um I think we were right here yeah we were right here so it looks like if we you know if we're in this situation right here if we can somehow go the opposite way of everybody else everybody's going to be going to this road so if we can somehow go the opposite way find this little stream or tributary whatever this is right here which would lead up behind this stuff and and you've got to keep in mind too that there's a lot of trails and stuff and who knows there's a park right here who knows what who else is going to be taking this path so at this point you might need to to kind of aim off a little bit and you're what you're doing is you're shooting for this little stream or river whatever this is right here so you might need to go back this way and come around this way rather than taking these trails right here so if you were to come around this way then you can shoot over here and follow this stream down which when it comes over here um you can see that well let me see where is it i don't know where this train track went i'm confusing myself a little bit oh the train track's up here okay okay <laughs> uh sorry guys i, I confusing myself a little bit so what you'd want to do is once you got here you wouldn't want to take this road like that but it looks like when you get down here, as you travel through this neighborhood, depending on what this is, you might be able to get to the railroad track that way rather than crossing this highway. And it looks like this is an overpass. So this might be a decent place. But again, this is something that you would take this this map right here and, and just kind of go through your area and, and figure out where you work and see, take a, you know, that big picture view up here of of what's around you because when you get real close like we'll zoom in real close here you don't see a whole lot of what's going on all the way over here all you see is oops that's yeah all you see is right here you know you don't even see above the trees so who knows what's going on out there but if you take that that big picture view and that's yeah let's oops let's go like that if you take that big picture view Sorry, I don't know how to work this thing. <laughs> if you take that big picture view anyway, you're going to see all of this stuff. That way, when you do go down in that area, you know, make it a weekend or something, a weekend day or or even just a little bit after work. Um, travel this route and see what is exactly over here. You know, if you drive down here, kind of look over here and see, you know, how how does that work? I don't know if you can travel on foot, but you know, if you can, I would I would do that. Maybe go park over at this park right here and just travel these trails and see what what they all lead to. And and you know, over here where these trails kind of meet these train tracks, uh, you know, see what's along that route right there and see where that will take you. And these train tracks kind of go under the highway. You'd have to be really careful right here. Maybe you dive behind these buildings and kind of skirt there uh, looks like it comes back down here I don't know if you'd want to do that 
maybe you know just ha- think about opsec the whole time how do you get through there without those massive crazy people seeing you and without looking like you're trying to be james bond and looking like you're hiding for, from stuff because the odds are people on this highway right here are going to be parked because it's going to be jam-packed so they're going to have nothing better to do than watch you sneaking around these buildings and they're going to go what the hell is this person up to what do they know that i don't know and you know maybe they just say screw this and abandon their vehicle right there and they come down and say hey buddy what's up where are we going um that stuff you don't want so you know maybe maybe at at this point maybe you do kind of travel the street i don't know it's a it's a situation where you would have to decide what gives you the best odds to do something maybe you go across this way and these you know i think these are going to be packed here too um right here especially but if you could somehow get into here and kind of make your way behind buildings and through alleys and stuff like that and then get out to where you're going and then eventually you can get to this level two zone um, and i'll go through that here in a second but this level two zone where it's not going to be as populated um, you can maybe travel through through Um, fields or maybe you know you've got an area where there's there's a little more elevation change and it's not all just flat like this but and you know that'll be totally different too i mean that would be a great route if we were going to the east that way but what if we're going to the west over here then you would have to kind of look for the same things you would have to look for these rivers and rivers and tributaries and let's take a, a let's go out a little bit and take a look if if you're somewhere over here you might not want to let me zoom in a little bit you might not want to go this way because there's a whole lot of stuff there but you might not have a choice either because there could be you might be trying to get to here or up in the mountains somewhere and this is what you have to do is travel through all that so what you would have to do is pick these these zones and let me go into what those are real quick we've got denver right here and as you can see denver this the downtown area is is zone one this has just got the massive population and it's got everybody in there um the buildings the work you know the the offices all of that stuff and then around the outside a little bit you've got these these kind of businesses that uh you know help the people that are traveling into the city they could be supplies they could be you know just little gas stations stuff like that but they help the people that are going into the cities uh, in Denver, we've got the 16th Street Mall, which is a mall that has a bunch of different shops and it runs all the way through downtown. There's a couple of little areas um, on the outskirts as well. And then after you get out you know, to this third zone, um, you can see that over here, let's zoom in over here a little bit, you can see that these are kind of the industrial areas where, where the, you know, the, the 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 railways and the the trucks and the and all of that stuff is going to be the manufacturers all of that stuff is going to be there and then as you get further out then you get back into the neighborhoods the, and and these could be dangerous these you know this is just a, a crapshoot as well there might be streams that you could take but this is the reason why i try to plan all of my routes um, in three different levels and not the the levels we just talked about these are just the levels of a city the the first zone second zone but what I try to do is if I'm say I'm somewhere over here let's say um, it, I'll take this first zone will be right here and then my second zone will be you know almost to where I want to be and and if there's hot spots here or hot spots up here then of course you're gonna want to avoid those as well but and then my third zone is going to be where I'm almost home free, where I where I am, where kind of where I want to be, or where my supplies are, where my family is, all of that stuff, and what is going to give me a, a better chance for all of this. So, so that's the the three zones basically right there. Um, you know, it it's like I said, this takes a lot of planning, and and that's the thing that you should do in the beginning is is figure out what what your plan is what you want to do what these different scenarios that might cause you 
to have to to have to bug out in in a situation like this and where are the areas that you could go you know we've got the never zoo right here i don't know if you want to go there but i do know that there's a park over here that is it's got a lot of different places that you could probably hide out for a little bit um i don't know that i would want to be traveling anywhere at night um it, that's that's just a tough call it's a you know, it depends on your time frame and, and what you need to do. But traveling at night in a situation like this is 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 going to be really dangerous. Um, so you might, you know, you might want to find a place like this or by a river that's that's really dense with trees and stuff to uh, to hide out. Um, that's probably a bear cage right there. But um, oh, no, that's the zoo right there. Um, but, uh, you know, you might want to find a place to hide out that nobody else is going to find you until, you know, really early in the morning when all of these turds and these bad guys are kind of, kind of wore themselves out and they've, or they've, they've robbed and they've done what they've wanted. They've looted. And then they're kind of going and taking a nap and take those early hours and, and get your butt moving and get out of there before all the action starts happening again. So let's go over the these slides real quick, and then we'll take some questions. Um, let me see. Let's go to the beginning one here. And if anybody has any questions, just just pop a comment in, and then I will do my best to answer them. And and remember, guys, when you ask the questions, don't nothing rude, please. Um, the just because you think something is really basic, another person might be on a different level. So. Uh, let's just kind of be not be rude to each other and, and make comments that that are unnecessary. So our main goal is is to get out alive, um, and like I said, it's it's it, it might take you a little bit longer, but you know it's a situation that that we kind of have to we kind of have to deal with. Now we've got a question here uh, from San Antonio it says I'm not allowed to take my firearm with me to work. What would you suggest? Uh, would you suggest I keep it in my car? Um, me personally, I mean, this is totally up to you. I don't, I don't keep my gun in my car. If it's not on me, if I'm going somewhere where I'm not allowed to take it, I'm, I'm not going to keep it in my car. Uh, there's you know, cars get stolen all the time. And the last thing I would want is to say, have my gun under my seat or, or even in my trunk and have my car get stolen and, and have a person that is, is willing to steal a vehicle, have access to my firearm and do something to somebody that with a firearm that's registered to me. So, you know, that's a tough situation. Lisa, my wife uh, is in the same situation. She works for Kaiser and, and she can't take um, her firearm with her and she's not going to leave it in her car. Uh, if you have a strong enough safe, you know, I, I suppose, and then you could report that gun stolen, but you know, it's just a, I, I just don't like taking it with me unless it's going to be on my hip. Um, or, or I'm walking in the store or something. I just am very leery about somebody stealing my car. I can handle that if they steal my car and steal my radio, whatever. But having a firearm in there that could do damage to somebody, hurt somebody, uh, that is, is my property. That, that bugs me a little bit, so I don't do that. I would research that a little bit and see what, what your options are. But, you know, I, I, I don't know. In, in the event that you're at work, I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. I don't think I would have a firearm with me. I wouldn't put a firearm in my bug out bag and take it into work. You're jeopardizing your job, uh, stuff like that. So, uh, you know, that's uh, something that I would research. All right. And the next one is, let's see, uh, we, we went over the using Google Maps. And I suggest, you know, using Google Maps to kind of plot out your area and use them. It's easy to do. You can sit on your couch and do it. And then you can kind of get a, a plan of action for for when you go out and and do that stuff and then be the gray man and when being the gray man you have to think like the homeless and and that doesn't mean looking all dirty and looking like you haven't taken a shower or anything like that um let's see here we've got one more question from rob in oregon um what would you do if you did find yourself in the middle of a riot um, if I were, you know, let's say I turn a corner and all of a sudden it just all hell was breaking loose. Um, I would try to stay out on the, the very edges. First of all, I try to turn around if I could. 
Uh, but don't get into the try to stay out of the middle of everything and don't become that target. You know, if you've got your backpack on and and, you know, you've you've got a, a knife on your side or something like that, you become a threat and you become that that, you know, it, it might not be an ideal situation for you. So I would look just scan for your your quickest exit that you possibly can and, and get away from that situation as safely as possible. Uh, again, this is something that you're going to be stressed out and you're going to be freaked out. And, and this is something that you really have to try as much as possible to stay as calm as you possibly can to get out of there and get out of there safely. All right, so we're running on about 40 minutes here. Um, let's see, avoid people, funnels and blocks, you know, stay off the roads, all of that. Um, and then foraging for resources and, and all of this stuff you just need to be really careful about because you could have people that are trying to protect their property, protect their businesses uh, that are getting looted. And, and you don't want to be one of those people looting for resources and stuff like that. In a situation like this, who knows, they might be stealing TVs or they might be stealing water. They might be whatever. But you need to stay away from that stuff and maybe try to find that that business district or somewhere where those resources might be a little more available or there might be people willing to help. Uh, but again, I, I would try my best to have it, it, all of my needs met before I even got in the situation with my bug in bag. And that's why we always do this stuff. So um, uh, I appreciate everybody listening today. What we're going to do is, is this, this webinar is going to be on the, the survivalist prepper Academy, uh, in the navigation course and probably the, the bug out course as well on both of those. And if anybody is not a member of the Academy, uh, let me pull it up here on Google real quick. Um, and I'll show you, sorry, I can't talk and text at the same time. Oops. Uh. Okay, let's get logged in here and see what this is all about. Um, but the Academy, wh what we do is we have a bunch of different courses and everything. Um, and I'm going to put this on the webinars and we're going to do webinars in the future about uh, um, intro to prepping and navigation and all of this stuff. But uh, like right here, we've got the bugging out course that that has seven different modules and I'm still working on this one, getting all this stuff together. Um, but it's got, you know, having a realistic view, bugging out scenarios, skills and education, excuse me, skills and education, all of that stuff. Um, so that's where, uh, if you want to learn more about this stuff, I'm going to put a lot of detail into the Academy and it's going to be better than any of those books you can buy that, you know, tell you you're going to die if you don't buy this, any of that crap. That's not what we're all about. We're about, uh, you know, giving, giving out as much valuable value as we possibly can. So, um, again, I appreciate everybody and make sure if you haven't signed up for the, on the email list, you can do so at just this homepage right here. Um, and sign up for the email. That way you can stay up to date when we, when we do other webinars that are free or, or even just for members. Um, you can, be alerted about those and the different stuff and the and the any members out there we always throw out emails about the newest stuff we're doing on the course each month and i'm going to try to do one of these webinars once a month and we're going to add new videos and all of that stuff that way you get an idea of what's going on in the next month and what you can look forward to so i think that's about it everybody um i appreciate your time this week and and i will leave if you go to the academy i believe Let's see, if you go to the Academy and you go to this page right here, which is webinars, uh, this is the next one we're going to be doing, but this will have a list of, and, and you can go here if you're a member or a non-member, but this will have a list of the, the different webinars we're going to do. And you can see the tentative start date is zero because I haven't set that up yet, <laughs> but, but it will be. Uh, but anyway, I appreciate everybody listening in today. And, uh, you know, if you do have any questions or anything, you can email me at dale at survivalistprepper.net uh, about the academy, about, you know, if you have any questions that I didn't get answered. Uh, there, there were a few of you just kind of running short on time. 
Um, but if you do have any questions, let me know. And you can also request to join the Apocalypse, which is my name for the Facebook group we have, which is a pretty cool Facebook group that, uh, you know, for beginning preppers, intermediate preppers, season preppers, it's just a really cool group to kind of be able to say what you want and not have to worry about your friends and neighbors and your family and all that stuff knowing about it. So uh, if you did want in that group, just request to join, uh, send me an email and say, hey, I'd like more information about this apocalypse group. And that way I'll let you in. I, I get a lot of requests every day and I don't let everybody in. So um, sending me an email is the best way to go about this. So I appreciate everybody. And uh, with that, I suppose we will we will talk to you in the next webinar. Uh, like I said, sign up for the email list and you'll know exactly when that is. But uh, I appreciate it and I hope everybody got some good stuff out of this. Uh, until next time, take care and prepare.